Coming up on this week's episode, we talk about Christmas, politics, ugh, Twitter, and you know, a little bit more. It's all gonna be good. All of this week's episode of. My name's Kai. And my name is Fraser. And uh, yeah, you know, good subjects this week. Yeah, Christmas. I'm actually buzzing about Christmas. We yeah. are literally one week away, plus a couple of days, obviously, one Ten week days. away from Christmas. What the fuck? Ten days. Ten whole days. Ow! It's come around so quickly. Do you remember when it was like August? No! Because... Do, you remember, do you remember when you came here with like uh, um, yes. Helen yeah, and yeah. Sherry and everyone? That was yeah. in July. I know, and that only feels like it was. Ma- Do you know what? Now it does feel like it was a couple of months ago, but, but it no feel more than as a couple. Long as July. Yeah, that's like five months ago now. Yeah, but in my head, I'm thinking, July oh, yeah, is, yeah, five months ago. Ridiculous! I can't believe that the time really has flown. And guess what? Do you want to know something that's even worse? Gone. Two weeks, three days. Happy 2022. <laughs> mm. Let's hope that's yeah. better than uh, this year, last year, you know? Yeah, we said that at the end of 2020 gone is 2021. And what's happened? Well, yeah, restrictions have eased and stuff, but... Well, um, <laughs> we, we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, or uh, in some cases, um, restrictions are in place, uh, but people have still gone and uh, flaunted the restrictions. Good afternoon, Prime Minister. <laughs> Hello, Prime Minister. But we'll get onto that in a little bit, because uh, the good news is that Christmas is a week away, and Kai, you are halfway through your Christmas video marathon now. Um, so far, so good. Stressful. I can imagine. I can really imagine. But I'm going to completely go over the last 15 days because that doesn't matter the thing i mean it does well done on all your hard work it's really hard to do what you've done uh, uh, you know what, I think Fraser, the- there's a starbucks video coming out today how exciting is that i bloody love starbucks well i don't like the coffee part but i love all of their like creative drinks where it doesn't really taste the coffee and it tastes more of the ingredients that i put in i love do that do not get the festive menu worst thing i've ever had yeah i won't don't worry <laughs> yeah uh but there is something which you and a couple of other people have put in an extreme amount of effort into coming out on the 18th. And Me and one I... other person. Oh! Oh, wait, who, yeah. did, did he master it as well? Yeah, 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 he did, every, he did all the mixing oh. and mastering. Bloody hell. Well, fair play then. So literally, you and one other person, in 24 hours, what did you do, Kai? We have made a Christmas song. Oh my God. And I say a sounds... Christmas song. It's kind of like a... I guess you could call it a Christmas song. It's kind of one you could play all year round if you wanted, but, you know, Christmas is the key part. Yeah, it's a focus. And yeah. do you know what? Now that I've heard it, I think it sounds absolutely incredible. And I think <laughs> it's really catchy. It is super it is. duper catchy. And we have a podcast exclusive. Yeah, go on. Shove a this little bit is, in. This is the first ever play of a little bit of the chorus of This Winter. The only place I want to be this winter is back in your We did call it originally Winter with a capital E, and that was it. Why? Because, uh, I think we just misspelled Winter and it came up with Wint- Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I just gonna call it that originally. So that sounds amazing though, Kai. I absolutely love the sound of that. It's really catchy. It is. I am a big fan of how well it's come out, you know. The the original idea, there was none. The idea was, hey, we're going to make... It's me and Nath, by the way. Nath is uh, the singer uh, uh, Teddy Bear. Yes. Um, he played with us at our gig in Herm Bay. Yes. And I, I, I messaged him and I was like, do, do you want to... Do you want to do a challenge with me where we try and make a Christmas song in like 24 hours? And he was like, yes. So we did it. Uh, it's going to be released on Spotify and stuff as well, obviously. Um, I think it'll oh, be under good. my name. Um, I haven't uploaded it yet, so I should get on that. <laughs> yeah. But no, I I did all the guitars. Uh, he did the acoustic guitar. Um, yeah. Which you can, you can hear like in verses and chorus and places. There's a nice... Yeah. Uh, section at one point um he did the bass for the chorus i did the bass for the verses nice um and then we he did most of the singing i did yeah. the backing vocals for all of it 
but like i also did the singing on that as well and then i did all the high harmonies bloody um, hell you know my voice like I, I stretch my voice a lot because it's like uh i don't know which chorus you inserted but if it's not the last one the we we go up an octave afterwards so we do a massive key change and instead of like you know it go like nah! it goes like all the way up there somewhere you know it's, <laughs> it's it, i think it goes higher than that like originally my harmony was like that and then i had to go like bloody nah! hell you know like at that point you're probably crazy. just like screaming <laughs> oh it was it was great i loved it oh amazing um, drums are all programmed as well so they, they sound sick for being programmed you know what well, i didn't think they sounded programmed at all yeah they sound really good don't they that must it was be all a really done good in logic. Pack. Oh well. It was all done in logic, so you know, it's pretty sick. Um I'm trying to think what else we had to do. There's some like um little chimes that we've inserted after all the filming just because yeah. it adds a little bit of uh focus, I guess. Bit where like, the whole do, do, do. Yeah, 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 you heard that. But the focus, like all of it I don't know, it took us about three hours to do the lyrics. Yep. Uh, and come up with like the melody and stuff. Yep. And then about six hours of recording like guitars vocals and like vocals yeah. and stuff it is difficult because you've got unlike guitars and stuff because you've got to record left right middle left right middle left right middle um you know so something yeah. will be in the left ear something will be in the right ear middle just to like really make it sound good and yeah just like small little things as well that you don't really pick up until you listen to it like 50 60 times or something you know Probably yeah you might not even pick it up um, but, I guess if you got the musical ear, maybe, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah. Like there, there's a song that I've been listening to lately that I've been learning, and yesterday I only just noticed like there was someone else singing like really high up, and I was like, oh, yeah. Eh? And I've listened to it like I don't know hundred times because I've obviously been learning it. Yeah. And I was like, eh. <laughs> it's funny yeah. when you hear things like that. You think you know a song. Uh, it's similar to movies as well. You think a, you know a song, or you think you know a movie, and all of a sudden something new comes out of nowhere. You're like, "Oh my yeah, god, this changes like, everything." <laughs> it is really odd, but no, that comes out on Saturday. Um, I think the song will be uploaded onto like Spotify and stuff, uh, probably at midnight. So you'll have like an early access sort of thing if you really wanted to go and run up and try and find it. But you might not find it because my profile has only just been made. You know. All right, yeah. So it might be link only for the time being, but it's it's good. Very excited for it to be released, and I think it's probably the the mo- the hardest video that I've had to do this entire month because obviously I'm it's, not surprised. You know, nine that hours requires of an insane amount of effort. Oh yeah, it was it was nine hours of like I said from I think we started at one. Yeah. By the time we finished, it was half ten, um, and at the end we were getting a bit delirious, you know, because obviously. We wanted to get it all done in one day. We didn't yeah. want to stretch it through. So all the recording process took nine hours. All the mixing and mastering is probably what took it up to 24 hours. Yeah, because that, <laughs> even though that's kind of like the last thing, the finishing touches, it still takes a lot to make sure that that's uh, done <laughs> to a T. Yeah, spot on. Um, and we, I think we're filming a video for it as well. I'm, I'm away, obviously, for the week, but I am in... A close proximity to where Nath lives so I might message him and be like hey have you got a spare few hours and do you want to film a shitty video <laughs> for it? You, know? you have to get like fake snow and get somebody to throw it at you oh yeah yeah we will oh, amazing it's gonna be great but yeah I'm, I'm not looking forward to editing it though because that video is like I said nine and a half hours of footage basically yeah um, uh, but it's the first two hours that really makes the most editing part you know the rest of it's fine but yeah that'll be out saturday stay tuned for it it'll be great hopefully we'll be hearing that song at christmas party soon i reckon it's gonna become a uk number one no problem mariah carey step out the fucking way (laughs) we got this winter (laughs) mariah Oh, but uh, yeah, talking of Christmas parties, um, you'd think the news of Christmas parties is really, really good news. Like, we we like Christmas parties. I went to my Christmas party last week as well with work. Um, Admittedly, very odd circumstances, considering the uh, newest restrictions that have been um, announced and people being uncertain. Um, But there's been some obviously bad news last week um, around Christmas parties. Isn't that right, Kai? Isn't that right, Prime Minister? <laughs> Good afternoon, Prime Minister. He ain't gonna listen Good to this afternoon, podcast. Prime Minister. He might. 
Uh, well, I'm kind of stealing a bit from Ant and Deck there, who are yeah. uh, very uh, notoriously renowned for uh, mocking the Prime Minister on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, which recently finished. Not going to announce the winner, uh, just in case people uh, don't want spoilers and they still need to catch up. Um, so, you know, just quickly go and Google that. Congratulations, winner, though. Uh, you did good. I'm, I, I've got quite a few. I had quite a few favorites. Um, so it was really yeah. hard for me to pick a winner. Um, you don't like Naughty but- Boy, do you? Oh, yeah, other than Naughty Boy. <laughs> I found him so annoying. But um, anyway, that we're spoiler free here. We're going to leave you to figure out that one. But um, yeah, Christmas parties. What's going to happen, Kai? So uh, our good friends at the, you know, the place of where the leaders are in the UK. Ah, uh, yes, the old... National Swimming Association. <laughs> yep. How did you know? <laughs> oh, I love swimming. <laughs> Yeah, uh, good old, uh, you know, Parliament and uh, all those lovely people at Number 10 and stuff. You know, Bojo and his posse. They held a party in Downing Street, uh, basically while people were dying and following restrictions themselves and being told, Mm. no parties for you, but for Mm. us, oh, a different story. They are massively under fire uh, to the point where uh, it's made international news. America, for example, has been one of the first countries to report on it internationally, saying Boris Johnson held a Christmas party whilst lockdown was in place. Um, it's been like three, wasn't it? I don't know. I, I, I saw I've heard of two. That was said uh, there was there was one in his flat. There was right. one at number ten, I believe. Yep. And then there was also like a Christmas quiz. Oh, I've not heard of the quiz one yet. I feel like that's right, but I can't remember. See, even after all this time, I still live a little bit under a rock. Um, but no, there's been um, there's been denials. There's been accusations everywhere. There's been denials that ever happened. Um, and uh, even then, there's been loads of video evidence coming out that has happened. And there's even been resignations now. Um, that's good. So that kind of sets the precedent that it did happen. And the government have lied. Yeah, well, well, that, that's no surprise, though, is it? Well, I mean... <laughs> when when haven't they lied? I mean, it's hard to say when people have lied. Like in, When people are in power and when people say, oh yeah, this has happened, this has happened. Obviously, there's evidence to back things up when people do lie. But when it's like, this is a very, very, very night and day situation where it's, yeah. did this happen? Yes, no. It's not like where they previously said, um, oh, is this the restriction? Oh, well, if this is a restriction, but at night time, you may go and stroke your cat, whereas at daytime, your cat spreads COVID. You know, it doesn't make sense. You know, things like that. Those restrictions make no sense. But this is night and day. Should your Christmas parties? No. Did you hold one? Yes. Are you going to admit it? No. That's basically how it's gone. Yeah. Um, and it's a very, in a non-political sense, and, and in a non-pandemic sense, it's a childish argument. But in a political sense, over a very serious pandemic, this is something which is very, very, very clearly should not have happened. Yeah. Um, and for 10 Downer Street to repeatedly deny that it ever happened, um, with proof coming out left, right and centre that it did happen, it's, it's horrendous. And it's, it's kind of an insult as well. There's been plenty of people... Um, And plenty of families, my family included, where lockdown restrictions have prevented families from going into hospitals to say goodbye to loved ones who died from COVID. Um, And that's been happening throughout all of the years. Obviously, restrictions throughout this year were a little bit more eased where you could go and do that. But throughout 2020, at least, it was almost impossible um, to go in and um, say goodbye to loved ones. And whilst that was all happening whilst people were dying i think on that day that they had the um most popular uh, most reported party of all of them uh, i think it was over 500 people died yeah whilst the officials were celebrating and it's naturally an insult yeah it's stupid also last year you know uh i didn't manage to go and visit my mum at christmas like originally yeah. planned because of you know restrictions they're like they said you could go and travel but that was the same day everyone was traveling and i didn't want to do that so we just mm-hmm. decided last year not to do it. Uh, this year, I am meant to be in Scotland for the first time in two years. Let's hope that that can still somewhat happen. Mm. You know, I don't. Well, I feel like stuff like I, th- I feel like stuff isn't going to close again at this point. You know, we'll have to wait and see because restrictions have now been announced, and obviously things are changing all the time. So you yeah. never know. By next week, things could allow you to do things again. Um, yeah. But it's really hard to say. Um, but people are also saying that these 
uh, it's very convenient that the restrictions are now being announced um, or have now been announced um, when this news is coming out. It's kind of like trying to uh, gloss over the fact that this big uh, this big party's happened. Yeah, you're right, actually. Quite a few senior political editors are saying that as well. And obviously, we tend to not report um, on politics here on the podcast because this is a, it's a friendly, fun podcast. Uh, we've had a good time uh, doing this podcast over the years. And obviously, we've touched on COVID a bit and we've touched on politics a little bit. But ultimately, this is quite a big, quite a big bit of news where it's more than just politics now. Yeah. When there's political figures breaking laws and very obviously breaking laws and abusing their power as political figures, may I quote from Jacob Rees-Mogg, not directly though, um, that uh, we shouldn't be seeing the police investigating us in a year's time um, over our business meeting where we're very clearly socially distanced. It wasn't a business meeting, they weren't very clearly socially distanced. Um, it's, they're, they're very clearly aware that they are breaking the rules and that's not somebody Thing that should right. be in power. They say that police don't investigate stuff a year ago. They do. Mm. <laughs> like, well, you can't say they don't because they 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 can and they do. There's still investigations and stuff with police going on that yep. happened, you know, fifteen odd years ago. I'm sure. Uh, I'm so, sure they'll uh, they'll respond very nicely to a sudden budget increase, though, to the police oh, force, won't yes. they? Oh yes. They'll so say, it's oh everything was fine blah blah blah. It's things like that, and it doesn't matter what side of the line you're on. You could be extreme left, you could be extreme right. I mean, if you're extreme right, you're probably supporting Bojo, but you could be still right. Um, it doesn't matter where you are. This isn't even a political debate at this point. It's night and day as to whether they're wrong or not, wrong or right, yeah. and it's very clear that they're wrong, regardless yes. of what side of the argument you're on. Hence why we're talking about it now. Yes. Um, and as we know as well on Twitter, hashtag Tory party, Tories partied while people died was trending as well. And plenty of other hashtags um, have been trending on Twitter as well. Um, and of course, the memes have come out. Um, we've seen plenty of those memes, but um, oh, yes. I th- we think it's very clear what should happen here. And obviously, if Bojo does step down before this podcast episode comes out which I don't think we'll see um, if he steps down you've seen what people have said to him over the last like I don't know how long has yeah. he been in power like two years now yeah no chance I, is he doing we that we doubt it we really doubt it no chance but if he does then I think that's the right thing to do but if he doesn't then I'm in no way surprised but again everybody loses a little bit more faith i think there was a poll i saw this um on twitter a couple of days ago um a poll was like should bojo resign um and it was like 58 percent yes 30 percent no and then yep. the rest of it was undecided so it's uh it's a very it's not even a brexit debate here it's very obvious what the general consensus is can i give you a quote from mr john robertson go on then today. mr john robertson good old robertron creator of the dark room he, he tweeted um, saying, David Cameron fucked a pig and now the pig is prime minister. <laughs> That's a quote and a half, isn't it? That is a quote and a half. And I love that tweet from him. <laughs> oh my God. Well, so, thank you, John Robertson, for thank you, John. Uh, he, he, that John wonderful Robertson's quote. John Robertson's a very uh, like, comedian. He's Australian as well, so he's allowed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're Australian, you immediately get the pass to make these jokes. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, well, obviously, you can go and follow John Robertson on Twitter at Robertron. Speaking of Twitter, um, they've also, you know, had some big news recently. Do you know what that means, Fraser? I do. There's plenty yeah. of big news here. There's a few things changing. Um, but ultimately, the big dog, Big Jack himself, at Jack, the former... CEO of Twitter has stepped down from his position. Do you reckon that now means that anyone that's called Jack could be like, oh, I, I've trademarked the name Jack. Oh, it's my brand's name. I must have this at. Oh, you need to get Jack Massey Welsh on this. <laughs> I, I should Somehow he'd do it, though, you know. Oh, definitely. He's always, he's always good at stuff like that, so maybe I'll message him about it. <laughs> yeah, he'll get his way. And then he can hack into the verification system and, like, verify, unverify everyone that isn't Jack. <laughs> Just, he's the only one verified. He's the only verified Jack, and he can verify oh, you as the only like verified ever. guy. Oh, no, yeah, there's no other Jacks. He just deletes the accounts. Yeah, if, you, if you call Jack, goodbye to your account. 
Sorry, Jack's films. Sorry, Jack Septiguy. Oh, All your maybe names aren't excuse Jack. Excuse Jack's films. Yeah, his real name's John. It's fine. Yeah, Jack Septiguy is also Sean. Exactly. So we're sorry. fine here. Yeah, but otherwise, you know, Jack Frost. Oh yeah, sorry, Jack Frost. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Jack's uh, the CEO of Twitter, or he was. He's stepping down. So uh, is he? Is he still working under Twitter, or is he full on? Leaving? So he's still remaining on the board until the end of his term. I'm guessing they have a recruitment term. I think the end of his term is probably near the end of a financial year. So, um, so he's still like a consultant in a way, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the best way to describe being on a board. He'll still do advice and stuff, but he's no longer a director. Uh, there's a guy. Um, I can't remember his full name. I think it's Parag. Yep. Um and he is the new CEO um of Twitter. Uh Parag Agrawal. That's it, that's his surname. I can remember his first name, no problem. But it's his surname, Agrawal. He is the CEO Agrawal. of Twitter now. Um and he it was it was tipped off kind of like a year ago that he could potentially be uh, the new CEO. Um, it's only just come out as recent news, by the way, that he could be the new CEO um, as of a year ago. But apparently Jack Dorsey said to Parag possibly about, you know, being the new guy. Um, and with Jack no longer being the CEO, this could result in big changes at Twitter. Because as we all know, the CEO, the chief executive officer, ultimately steers the way the company works. Yeah. What new I, things do you reckon it kind of comes to Twitter? I don't know. I'm, it's uh, At this point... Twitter and all, all social media platforms copy each other for everything. Yeah. They do not come up with anything original anymore. They just copy each other, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it's basically going to be Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and YouTube and, you know, probably Twitch and stuff as well. All suddenly merged into one. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you know, suddenly you could do live streaming no problem full time on twitter oh imagine it'd be very odd they do have the ability to monetize things like videos on twitter um for approved accounts which have access to twitter's media studio um and have access to the monetization of the media studio they can embed ads at the start of their videos yeah have you seen the twitter for professionals thing have you got that uh, yes, I've got it. And uh, even what the podcast it? account has it as well. So at the moment, it's a it's a very small feature. It's something which they're going to be um, expanding on in the future. But at the moment, what it does is it allows you to add a new field to your profile, which designates um, what your profile is about. So for me, I've got mine set to content publisher. Yep. Um, for the podcast, it's just set to podcast. Um, for famous people, they've got set to social media influencer. But I mean... I would hate to put myself down as social media influencer. (laughs) So would I. I, I'd probably put down musician, you know? Yeah, exactly. Musician, that could be a good one. Or even like, I'm sure there's probably something like content editor. I think even content publisher works with you as well. But like saying social media influencer, unless you're like a big, big dog. I think it's like such a weird thing to call yourself a social media influencer if you're relatively small. I don't really like the word influencer, to be honest. No, it's such a weird word i hate referring to myself as it if i would ever to be referred to as an influencer yeah um, whenever, whenever people ask me what i do i say oh i make i make videos in my room <laughs> no context <laughs> yeah. leave it at that you know let them work out for themselves what it is ah yes adult videos <laughs> see that could be a thing as well twitter twitter blue could be you know their adult section okay then you, am i am i wrong no but because that is that is a thing where it's like a, a charged thing, isn't it? Uh yes, so you can subscribe for exclusive posts um so, as part of um super follows. But Twitter Blue isn't necessarily part of Super Follows though. Okay, I see. But there is Super Follows, which is a new feature which kinda came out at the same time as Twitter Blue, uh where you can have like exclusive posts. It's kind of like the Patreon of Twitter, but it's all embedded in one place. I or see, uh, I see. as some people refer to at the very start, the only fans of Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. But um, I, I am interested to see what happens with, you know, a small like it's not it's not a massive change, but it is a big change, you know. Yeah, well, there's been there's been a couple of rumors at the moment, um, because not long after Parag became the CEO, um, as you mentioned quite a few podcasts ago now, uh, there's this new feature called Twitter Communities. Um, the Twitter Communities uh, feature on web stopped working. Uh, very suddenly now you can still access uh, Twitter communities and you can still like view tweets in them but whether it was a bug or not or whether there was a behind the scenes whole either way it's been like this for a good week and a half maybe two weeks now you can no longer interact with any tweets on web you can still do it on iPhone you know? but you know you can't reply you can't like and you can't quote retweet I just liked oh maybe they fixed it 
<laughs> but for the last two weeks prior to recording anyway, um, yeah, you weren't able to even reply on web. Hmm. Um, so people were uh, suspecting, oh, maybe this could be a turnaround of the new CEO. But clearly that's not the case. It was just a bug. <laughs> But there's a few Weird. other things that they're trialing at the moment anyway. For example, in India at the moment, they're testing a new Explore tab design, which people Ooh. are really comparing to TikTok. It is a full screen preview of media tweets. Um, and you swipe through like TikTok. It's not going to work. Well, I, I, mean, I kind it probably of agree. Will, but, you know, it's... Think about every single thing that Twitter's copied. You know, when they added stories, which they called, what was it, Fleets? Fleets, that's right. They're gone. Yep. Because no one wanted them. No one used yep. them. Uh, you know, Instagram's Explore tab, it's okay, but I don't think anyone really uses it. You know? No. Um, and I'll be honest, stuff like that, just if if it was for the platform originally, probably would, no problem. But it's not, you know? I think they're trying to bring in some kind of like addictive um, scroll in nature. Because as we know, TikTok is addictive. You swipe yes. down, you don't pay attention to the time at all. Yes. And because you don't know what's ahead, like you can't pre-read up ahead. Is the time hidden on TikTok as well? Is that... Yes. Oh, no, no, the time's there. Oh, maybe for older iPhone models like mine, the time actually isn't there. I see. No, mine's there. Mine's there. But as we know from not being able to uh, predict what's coming up ahead, um, you kind of want to keep swiping, see what comes up next. Yeah. And whereas if you go into the current Explore tab, we can see things trending, absolutely no problem. Obviously, some of the elements of the Explore tab are still going to be there like the tabs at the top just below the uh, search button. Um, but the actual For You section um, is going to be like the TikTok For You page where you just swipe down, you don't see the hashtags, you don't see the news, you just keep swiping. Whereas at yeah. the moment on my main screen, being somebody with an iPhone 7 Plus, I can see one main major news article um, and then four major news articles, uh, sorry, two major news articles and four trends. Mm. So um, yeah, but if I want to see anything up ahead, uh, then, you know, I'd be probably a little bit more inclined to have a look through to see what else there is. You know, what you so you can understand. See, no, but you can understand why they're doing it, because they really are trying to encourage like addiction. Keep swiping, keep people on the app, keep retention. It does work. It makes sense. But it is one of those it's horrible features. Mm, exactly. You know, the thing about a social media platform is it has to be different to another one. It can't yep. be the exact same because I get it's competition, but no one cares. Yeah. You know? I mean, I I obviously I have to edit YouTube Shorts for Jack and stuff. Yeah. But I have not looked at YouTube Shorts at all. No, neither. There's no point in it, you know? I haven't even looked at Instagram Reels ever because there's no point in them. Oh, wow. You know? So as nice as it is to have a new feature, or sorry, new feature, just come up with something original. I think we're going to find some new product which hits the market soon which is going to completely change the way things work like i guess tiktok is doing exactly that they did that uh they yeah. changed from musically to tiktok and now they disrupted the market to the point where everyone else is trying to copy them but well, now I mean, there needs at, to be um, look at when when everyone used skype and TeamSpeak, and now everyone uses discord as well discord was the perfect replacement yeah i remember when i first wanted i first found discord in 2015 15 i think it was um yeah. and i found it because i used to use plug dj may it rest in peace or at least the original owners of plug dj may they rest in peace they didn't die the, uh, do you get what i'm trying to say moving on Sorry, um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and my the community that i used to listen to tasty cat they created a discord community when discord was in beta so i created my account to join the uh, tasty cat community and at the same time i was like oh i could have a quick about and make my own and that's when i recommended it to everybody else who was in our collaboration group at the time it wasn't adopted, but then look where it's at now. Yeah. Properly adopted. Yeah. It's weird. I guess we'll see how Twitter goes, though, about this, you know, and what yeah. happens. But but talking of things going on on Twitter, <laughs> I mean, I can't see the next line in this no, uh, document. I, can't see. I, I just see it, see it says, seems to be following everyone. Yeah. I, I, oh, what seems of course, to be following? of course. Fred Figglehorn's dad. Oh, he's Fred following everyone. Dad. Of course he is. <laughs> yeah, randomly John Cena, uh, you know, famous wrestler, also now somewhat actor. Yeah, um, kind of like Dwayne Johnson. Um, is randomly following everyone on Twitter. 
he followed me uh, the, this morning, so a while back, but he followed yeah. me randomly, and, you know, I, I don't really understand why. He, he's now following, like, you know, 400,000 people or something stupid, but <laughs> why? Do you have any idea? God knows. Because he doesn't need to follow anyone. He's got 13 million followers or something. 14 million followers? I think I think he's just trying to get those notifications triggered. And yeah, fine, do it. I'm just glad he hasn't triggered mine yet, or at least I haven't seen it. Yeah. It, I mean, it's an easy trend, isn't it? You know, if he wanted it. Yeah. What's John Cena doing? Everyone just remembers... Um, everyone just remembers John Cena exists all of a sudden and then he gets forgotten like a month later. <laughs> Not even a month. Give it like two weeks and everyone kind of forgets about everything, don't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, but... I think we're uh, I think we're probably done for this week's episode. Yeah, I'd say so. Thank Although, you for listening. Quick oh. announcement from you. What's going on tomorrow? I'm going to my first gig of 2021. And you're performing? No, no, no. I'm watching. Okay, cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need to say that. Okay, now you can do the outro. Anyway, yeah, thanks for listening, everyone, to this week's episode of... Be sure to follow us here and on our Twitters, at Stuck in a Podcast, at Fraser IRL, at Kairos Best, as well as, like, you know, social media, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok. They're all basically the same platform at this point, you know? Yeah. Um, and hopefully the rest of the year pans out quite, quite nicely. We'll be back once again next week another episode the christmas um, episode the christmas episode be weird yeah one week till christmas <laughs> uh anything else you want to add fraser no not really uh, okay well anyway remember don't be an asshole like the prime minister is that right mr prime minister yeah bitch yeah bitch <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>